thank you. I say we receive and we are open to hearing from you and even participating today, Lord. Uh, even, even speaking out, even singing out today. Uh, I ask you, Father, that your anointing would rest upon this man, that you would speak through him, that you would open his eyes even now to see and carry your words only. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. You All right. <laughs> well, that was worship. Man. Um, bear with me. It's going to look different. Um, the difference good. We're going to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I was talking with actually a couple of buddies right before service, and um, we talked about just that, being okay with being uncomfortable and uh, understanding that God is outside our comfort zone. And so if we try to keep him there, that's where we end up complacent because um, the Lord has bigger and better things than we could ever imagine. And so it takes us being uncomfortable to break us outside of our own imaginations, right, and in our own expectations of our life because he has great things for each of us to do. Um, but that's a side note. Um, leading up to this word, the past two weeks, I was actually supposed to speak um, a few weeks prior. Didn't have much, so we pushed it back a little bit. And uh, over the course of time, uh, I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I typed. And for those of you who know me, I uh, can talk a lot. And so I ended up writing a lot. Um, and then it came down to maybe three or four days ago, and uh, what ended up happening is the Lord said, okay, now you're empty, and it's my turn to speak. Um, so the whole time I was typing and writing, and oh, yeah, that's good, and great. And then I come home, and I'm like, all right, Bay, I need you to be the, uh, the sifter. You got to give me the good stuff and get rid of what's me. And I read a few paragraphs, and it was all me. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, David, that doesn't make any sense. And I, I said, I'm not doing this. I can't do this. I'm overwhelmed. I, I feel so much anxiety. I feel a pit in my stomach. I don't know what's going on. But she knew that three days prior I had a dream. And I was trying to fit the dream into what I wrote. But in God's amazing love, he allowed me to empty myself. So that whenever he spoke, it was clear. It was obvious. And so oftentimes in our lives, we will find ourselves in that place. We'll find ourselves in a place where we're, we're doing all the stuff. We're trying to figure it out. We say in the right words. We're singing the right songs. But we still have the pit in our stomach. Where's the life? Where's the Lord in our great moments of clarity within our own minds and within our own hearts? Well, the secret's in his heart. The secrets and what he wants to say. And so what we feel like is walking through the mud, the Lord is actually in, taking us through a time of preparation. He's, he's preparing our hearts to receive the seed that he's wanting to move. Because all this back and forth, I'm walking on the dirt. Oh, man, this is, this is terrible. Oh, look, a, a rain cloud comes over me and we're, we're storming and, and I don't know what's going on. And now I'm, making, I'm just making mud, Lord. Why are you just having me walk through this rain making mud? And, but the soil beneath our feet was hard before. But we were walking through the junk the whole time, and we were the tiller. And he was like, walk through it. Walk through it. But we have to be able to have our eyes fixed on him. Because as we say, Lord, this isn't fun, but you're better than this, and you're enough to walk through this. I love you enough to say yes, even though I walk in it, I don't know where I'm going. Even if I'm only going 10 foot this way, and then you turn me around, and I go another 10 foot this way. Lord, why am I taking 10 steps forward and 10 steps back? Because you're preparing the ground, son. You're preparing the ground. And sometimes the Lord puts a person in your life that prepares the ground for you, and that's harder. <laughs> and sometimes it's the person you're married to, and that's harder. <laughs> and then the Lord plants the seed, and you say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you saw what I couldn't see. I was looking on a temporary timeline, but you saw something that was going to grow. You saw something that was going to come after the hard time, his faithfulness is unchanging, and his ways are always good. 
He is not just good things. He is goodness. He is not just a hand. He is the Father. And he uses us as a hand. But he pours out his amazing love to us through the hard times. And even when, and he allows us to show our frustrations. That's what's amazing about the Lord. He will allow us to be raw and real and authentic. And saying, God, this is just who I am. And I know it's not right, but I hate this. I'm not happy here. This is not fun. This is supposed to be raindrops and lollipops. And I don't like what's going on here. But he sees a greater purpose. He sees something bigger. And so that's how this, this whole thing transpired in me. I had to walk through the dirt and I had to get the hard word from the most amazing woman I've ever met in my life. For y'all who don't know, that's Fallon. That's my wife and she does not like to be called out. So I'm doing it because I'm uncomfortable and she will be too. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so she is the... Greatest gift I have ever been given by the Lord because she has pulled things out of me that I never would have anticipated were in me in the first place. So, thank you, Lord. Um, So the dream, coming full circle. Uh, The dream was, uh, I was in a hotel room. This isn't the dream, sorry. I was was in Texas for the past week working, um, panicking, trying to write a sermon while I'm off of work in the hotel room, thinking oh, it's going to be easy because I'm going to be in a hotel room with no distractions. It's just going to be me and the Lord, and I'm just going to get to blast out this amazing word of God. And so last, the second to last night there, um, I just went to the Lord and was typing, and around midnight I said, okay, i got to wake up at 6. I'm, I'm going to be done for now. And I put my head on the pillow, and I just remember saying, Jesus, help me because I don't know about this. I just didn't want to do it. Honestly, I did not want to do it. But from the moment I was asked to, I didn't want to do it. But from the moment I was asked to, the Lord said, do I have your yes? Will you till the ground? Will you turn something up inside of yourself that you always said you weren't worthy to do? That's hard. But he's good. And he's so faithful. Because I could have got up here and I could have said all of my words and it could have, maybe somebody got something out of it because he works all things together for good. But I guess he uh, had a better way. Thank you, Lord. So the dream was this. I went to sleep saying that simple prayer, woke up at four in the morning and I had a dream. And he said, record it word for word. Because I was like, oh, I'll remember that. That's a big one. I remember that. And I put my head down and he said, wake up, write it down. I'm like, all right. Wrote it down and the dream was, that I walked up here, grabbed this podium, and was shaken. Like I was looking through a fisheye lens and could not, could not catch my breath, and I had a blanket with me. And I looked over at Cody, and she did that. She smiled at me. <laughs> and we were having this dialogue between me, Cody, and Amanda, and the, the Lord basically was like, give her your blanket and grab this from Amanda. And so I reach out, and Amanda grabs, hands me a bag of David's sunflower seeds. like that and I grabbed it and I was like okay and what that signified was um, oh let me let me get to the whole dream after that I knew that I had to let go of my comfort and just throw seed be willing to throw the seed I was so worried about what was going to grow where it was going to land and how it was going to all happen that I was unwilling to even throw seed. I had to hold my blanket. So the Lord said, drop the comfort blanket, and I'll do it. All you have to do is this. And I was like, okay. So after that, I I said something immediately once I got the seeds. Let me look this up real quick, because I know I'm going to fumble it if I don't read it. Yeah, so so that's the the, the jump. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Okay, what I said in the dream. Grab the seeds. And I was looking down just like this. It's really, this is really unreal how this is happening. We must let go of what we think we are capable of doing so God can use us as a vessel to say what he wants to say. 
His words are more powerful than anything we could ever do on our own. The word of God will accomplish more in us in a moment than a lifetime of striving without his word. And what I want to point out about that is that his word is greater than our biggest accomplishment, our biggest deed, our greatest effort. I mean, even in the word it says that our greatest effort is like filthy rags because he is so holy. He is so amazing. And I'm going to come back to that because there's a, there's a, I feel like there's a kingdom secret in there, but I want to unfold some stuff first about this dream. Also, before I go any further, I do want this to look different. I don't want to talk this whole time. I want to give God his space. So if the Lord is revealing something to you, dropping a song in your heart, sing out. And we'll, we'll drop the mic and we'll just praise the Lord for a little bit. If he gives a prophetic word, let's do that. Let's just move as a congregation, as a body. Let's be the body of Christ. Like, like Josh had talked about, we are the body of Christ. We, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit within us. And so each of us have something to offer even now. The Lord is moving on us even now as a body. It isn't one person standing up here and just talking his face off and you saying, that's good. The Lord is saying things in your heart. Whenever you say yes, it's because God said something to you. And so share with us what God is saying. Because we don't just want to agree, move on, and forget. We want to agree, hear what the Lord said, and then grab onto that and put some faith to it. We want to come alongside each other and till the ground. We want to honor the seed. Yes. You know? Right. You know? Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. I give you your space, Father. Come in power, Lord. All this is for you. We are here for you. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Jesus. He will create something beautiful out of honoring the seed. One seed is enough. One promise is enough. One seed will grow into something beautiful. You know, I think there's something very special about the fact that it was sunflower seeds. The sunflower, whenever it grows, it follows the sun. It follows the sun. So, as that, that one promise sits in our hearts, if we can just keep our face on him, all the other things fall into place. So the amount of time facing the sun determines how much we grow. The amount of time facing the sun determines how much we grow. The amount of time facing the sun will determine how much we grow. How much time do we spend in the sun? For me, it's never enough. But he's still faithful. His promise is if you seek me, you will find me. That is his word, and we can trust him at his word. I don't even remember the melody. You're too good not to believe. 
You're too good to not believe. He's too good not to believe. Time and time again, after everything we've seen in our lives, we oftentimes think of wanting to see a miracle happen to someone, to happen to someone, to happen to someone, forgetting the miracle that happened to us, not honoring the seed that was sown into us. Can we pull up the words to that that first song, that new song? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, that. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. I was one. It's a miracle that I am here. It is a miracle. So if you wanted to see one, just take a second. And say, Lord, what did you do for me? You saved me from death, hell, and the grave. You chose a way that I could not take. You took the path that I could not walk. I'll walk on whatever you want me to walk on because you walked somewhere I couldn't walk. I could never walk that path. I could never bear that burden. I could never honor that seed enough that God planted in you. You honored an ultimate seed. You said, I saw what the Lord set before me, and I said, not his will, but mine be done. I've seen families reunited. I've seen addicts set free. I was one. Remember what he did in you first. Honor your promises, Lord. Your word never falls void. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. To prosper you, not to harm you. To give you a future and a hope. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on, y'all. You never stop. You never stop working. He will not stop. He is in the great pursuit of our hearts. He is in the great pursuit of our hearts. We need only to give a yes. That's all he requires of us. Yes, Lord. We pursue him because he first pursued us. We're not doing him a favor. He did us one. He's first. He is great. He is mighty. He is able. He is the healer. He is the provider. He is the one who does all things. We get to be a part of it, but we didn't create it. He is the creator. At a word, he created. We follow his word. We trust your promise. I, um, I, there was something really powerful about that reading of that song and saying that was me. Mm-hmm. Um, so can we spend like a minute with everybody being able to do that? Yes, that's good. I would, I would be dead. Um, yes. I, I had tried several times to commit suicide. So without Jesus coming, I would be dead today. Yes. So let's do that. Yeah. Let's put that back up there and just cycle through it. Just look at that. And the the one that touches your heart, spend some time with the Lord on that. Dreamless troubles, so delivered God. Families reunited. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Thank you, God. I've seen the addicts finally. Thank you, Lord. And you were speaking, I was hearing that. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. They did not love their lives to death. Yes. They overcame by the word of their testimony, unashamed of the grace poured out over them. The Lord took the shame. And created something beautiful. That's why there's no shame in a testimony. That's why I can stand here 
And if, if, we, if I felt like the Lord wanted me to, I could unfold the secrets of my heart and of my life and all of the atrocities because there's no shame in it. I died with Christ and came up a new creation. Right? And that's for each of us. What do you want to say, Lord? I just feel like there's some more stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said he, he had, yeah, absolutely. Honor your promises, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I was a troubled soul, and that, that little line right there got me. I used to be fighting demons. I had sleep paralysis, and I'd fight demons nightly, daily in my mind. And it's been months. I can't even remember the last time I've actually had to fight one again. And it's all glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hope, 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 hope down in my heart. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Can, can, can I share something real quick? Um, I, I think it was Amy that had come up and started talking about the, the waves and the water yes. and all that kind of stuff. Right before that, God was just, he does word plays in my mind all the time. And I'm probably going to mess this up, but there is this promise, the seeds of promise for the Israelites whenever they were in Egypt. They were slaves to yeah. all those things, the yeah. addiction, the brokenness, all of those things. And what God was just, he was... <laughs> He was saying, he said, they, they thought they were fleeing, but he was freeing. Wow. And he seized the seas to let them go free. <laughs> he thought they were fleeing, but he was freeing. They thought they were fleeing, but he was freeing. And he seized the seas to set them free. And I think yes. it's no coincidence that baptism is happening today yeah. because it's a picture of going through the water to come out the other yep. side, free from what yep. once kept us as slaves in Egypt. Yes, yes. Where is that? <laughs> He's so good. He's so good. Let me find this real quick. Go ahead. And <clears throat> thank you for reminding me about the seed. Because thank you, Lord. that's what I need to think on. Not how long it's taken me and getting down on myself about, you know, not being in the Word as long or, or getting tripped up by different things like over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But hallelujah that God saved me for myself. Yeah. 34 yes. years ago. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You guys, I had been struggling with the Jezebel spirit. Wanted to direct men. Wanted to just be angry for no reason. And I've been on a fast for about four to five days, God. Starving her. Starving her. She's gone, God. Yeah. God said put her away and she's gone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, he tells us what he has for us. And then right after that, I feel like it's the heart's response. In Jeremiah 12, 29, 12 through 14, it says, In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. That's a promise. That is a seed of promise. So it's not, I don't know if I'm ever going to get out of this. If you seek me, 
You will find me. If you pray, I will hear you, says the Lord. His heart is for you. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Yes, name The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. And I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your head, lay back against you and breathe. And feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. These are your problems. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me go back to what I said in that dream real quick. We must let go of what we are capable of doing so God can say what he wants to say. His words are more powerful than anything we could ever do on our own. His word 
is more powerful than anything we could ever do on our own. The word of God will accomplish more in us than a lifetime of striving and trying without it. If he said it, he will do it. The secret is in his timing. Thank you, Lord. And it says that you said trials and struggling and striving and the addiction and the depression and the anxiety are the dead leaves that fall down that nurture that seed. Nothing wasted. Nothing wasted. Yeah, and that pruning. That's song. Search me and know me, God, and see if there be any wicked ways in me. Give me the fear of the Lord. And I want my life to be a pleasing sacrifice in your eyes. Give me the fear of the Lord. And oftentimes these, these songs we sing, we, we have to remember that they're scripture-based. So we're, we're literally singing the word of God back to him. And his word does not fall void. That song is actually Psalms 139, 23. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Lord, shine your light on all of it. Point out anything in me that offends you. Wow. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. Jesus. Mm-hmm. The, Lord Psalm, was, the yeah. Lord was just highlighting to me um, just now about the dream that there has to be an exchange um, where there is a release, there has to be a putting aside. Um, and that's one of the things that Israelites struggled with was they wanted to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted to go back and, and, you know, grab that, the comfort or the blanket because mm. change and risk is uncomfortable. Um, and it's hard work. Yeah. Um, and so the, just the exchange of you give away the blanket but receiving wow. the new yeah. and taking up the work, yeah. taking up the work of the Lord. I feel like the Lord just dropped it in each of our hearts. We all know what our blanket is. And so we're going to give him his space. Lord, we lay that blanket down right now. We lay down our comfort.
Exactly. You know, what's, what's funny about a security blanket is I have three little girls, and they've all had a special thing whenever they were growing up. And the only time that they weren't heartbroken not to have it is whenever they knew it wasn't coming back. Even when we washed it, they were still upset until they got it again. But I was going to clean it. You don't understand. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. It'll be okay. It's better now than it was before. And you can have it for a little bit longer. And what I'm hearing from God is us as children sometimes, the Lord doesn't want to just whitewash the tomb. He wants to take it. He took death. Sin, no matter what it is, will lead to death. And so sin, no matter how small, is still a filthy blanket. No matter how many times we try to pass it through the washer. But if we come before the Lord and lay it down, put it on the altar, set it on fire, I won't, it won't be as hard to walk away from it because I know it doesn't exist anymore. It is gone. So I would ask for y'all to just step into that. Not just lay down the comfort blanket, the security blanket, but allow the Lord to set it on fire in front of you. And that would be an offering to him. Pleasing sacrifice in your eyes. Give me the fear of the Lord. The honor. Wow. Yep. Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave and told his friends to take off his grave clothes. Yeah. 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 They didn't clean him up and put him back on. Yep. That's good. Grave clothes are for dead people. You're not dead. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we will not identify with the things that we were freed from. I'm not a recovering addict. I'm a redeemed addict. And so I am no longer that. I am who he says I am. I am free. I am whole. I am his. I am loved. We take on the identity of Christ. And the things that we've acquired along the way, we lay down as offerings to him. And those things don't become a part of us that just hold on to our, our, our little coattail. They become a testimony to him. Those things don't point back to us. They point back to him. Jesus. Psalms 31, 7 through 16. I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love. For you have seen my troubles. And you care about the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemies, but have set me in a safe place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. And so this is David. And so if y'all know David, he's an emotional dude. So I really, I really connect with him. Because I'm like, what? I'm all of that. Ask Fallon, I cry a lot. It's cool. It's cool. Um, so this just really hit me. And... And so this is just David taking us on one of his rides. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. 
I am scorned by all of my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, if I were a broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me, and I'm surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. And then the light bulb comes on. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant and your unfailing love rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I called out to you for help. And so you see, he pours out his heart before the Lord and is, just doesn't hold back. My friends don't even like me anymore. I feel like I'm dying. I cry all day. And then it's kind of like the Lord says, okay. Keep emptying, get it all out. And then he says, now who am I? But I trust you, O Lord. I rejoice in your word. You will not leave me to the side. Because of the seeds of promise. And that's a secret. God's promise that David brings before the Lord in the midst of struggle is God's perfect timing. God's deliverance, and his unfailing love. These are the things he promised David even in that time of distress because instead of recoiling and isolating and going, oh, this pain is too much, I can't do that, he turns to the Lord and says, Lord, these are all the things that hurt. And God speaks his promises back over him of his timing and his deliverance and his unfailing love. And David returns to a place where he He's okay again. And it's okay to not be okay sometimes. <laughs> Lord, teach us how to hold on to your promises through pain. Help us to have a confidence in your unfailing love for us. Lord, I ask that you would shift hearts in this moment from I need to know to I let go trusting that you have already gone before us and prepared a way that we would just trust you and walk in it. Seize of promise. Cause your ways are higher than our ways And the plans that you have made are good and true If you lead us to the fire You will not withdraw your hand So we gaze into the flames and look to you Jesus <laughs> yeah. I'm not lost, y'all. I'm just waiting. Go for it. Sorry, I'm. I've never. Uh, oh. <laughs> you heard Mike. I, j- I just heard um, that God is asking for laborers. Um, and. The rain is, is, is very significant in this because um, the Lord is asking for laborers. And um, the labor is a daily surrender, a releasing, a letting go. Um, and that's how we water the seed.
Okay, she said um, that God's calling laborers, and it's a daily surrender. It's an everyday and just surrender to the Lord, because so practically, what does that look like sometimes, you know? And uh, just a daily surrender. Like Nicole talks about that one time. I just was reminded of that. Okay, this thought pops into my head. Okay, nope. Let me, let me take it back to Jesus and just yeah. surrender that thought and, and, and almost like a course correct of my mind yeah. type of thing. That's such a good word. One thing that we always need to be mindful of is in the word it says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so we're not waiting on on the harvest. It's ready. And so that's such a timely word that we need to step into who God has said we should be. Mm. It is well. Yes. Yes. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Um, the Lord gave me this song, but I'm not going to sing it. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to read this part. Um, Use me, break me, waste me on you, Lord. Ruin me, take me, waste me on you, Lord. For the die, to die is to live. Um, and I just, I just feel like that's just the heart posture of what the Lord is saying. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> to die is to live, yeah? Seeds of promise. What must a seed do to grow? For life to spring forth, it has to die. It must die. It must be broken for life to come forth. And so in the same way, whenever we honor the seed of the Lord, we lay down our life and say, Lay it all down, lay it all down. Lay it all down, lay it all down. Yes, Lord. We lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Yes, Lord Jesus. Whatever it costs, I am all one thing. Yes, Lord. And it's Jesus. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it costs, yes, Lord.
thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we honor your promise. We trust you at your word, and we believe that what you say is true, God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you've orchestrated such a beautiful time with you, that you would even have baptism right now, Lord, so that we would see, see this seed go beneath the water, Lord, and come up new. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you said. Thank you for your word. Thank you for coming through like you always do. You always come through. Thank you that you don't stick to a temporary timeline, but that you look at the perspective of eternity so that our obedience can echo through time and space, God. That our yes would stick out above everything else. That all of the questions and all the wondering and all of the other things, Lord, in your time you will answer what you want to answer, Lord, but all we have to do is yield. We say yes to you. Thank you, Lord. Gannon?